Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to discuss handlebar bags. So periodically I get comments in the comment section asking about these different handlebar bags that you see on my bike when I'm riding. But uh, more specifically there was a comment asking about Teresa's handlebar bag, what the brand was and what, what size and that sort of thing. So I thought in today's video, I would just run through the various handlebar bags that I have experience with, which is the Swift Industries bag, this Gilles Bertude, and the Ruthworks bag down there. I'm also gonna show you Teresa's Acorn bag as well, and we're gonna talk about some of the differences between these bags. I'll go through and physically measure each one so you can see the different sizes, and then I will post in the comments below links to the websites of these different bag makers. So before we begin, I do want to say these all these bags that you will see are uh, standard bags made by these different companies. So you can either order them directly or you can buy them in a shop somewhere. Uh, they are, because it, they are not necessarily, they're, they're handmade and they're sort of custom in a way, they're not custom to you specifically. So there are some trade-offs when you buy something off the shelf. So if you're looking for a very specific bag that does very specific things, then I would recommend you go and get a fully custom bag made to your exact needs. However, if you don't need something exact and you're just looking for a really good quality handlebar bag, then all of these will serve that purpose perfectly fine. So let me go through these different bags and let me tell you a little bit about each one. And then at the end of this video, what I'd like to do is discuss different ways to mount these bags onto the bike. Now the only exception to that, of course, is this Ruthworks bag down here, which I have already done a video review of. And I'll post a card up here on the screen. This bag does not require a rack. It is actually a rackless uh, handlebar bag. That's the only one I own that's rackless. These other bags and Teresa's bag does require a rack for support. So I'll go through that. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, Deca lures, which are the brackets that mount the bag to either the stem or the headset or the rack. There's different ways to have a Deca lure but a deca lure basically provides additional support of the bag uh, to the rack. So we'll go into that a little bit as well. So what I have, I have three uh, different randonneering style rack mounted handlebar bags. This one is a Swift Industries uh, waxed canvas uh, bag. And then I have the Geo Bertude uh, model here. This one's not set up right now on a bike, but I have this Gilles Bertude. This is the GB22 size, so it's a little bit on the smaller end of the G Gilles Bertude handlebar bag. I think this might be actually the medium, but it's on the smaller side compared to these other two bags. And then I have a Acorn bag, which was donated to Therese uh, for her bike. And this bag is also a uh, it's called a large, but it's actually smaller than this Swift bag, which I think is uh, a large. The width of the bag is approximately 28 centimeters. The depth of the bag is 16, uh, fifth, excuse me, 15 centimeters. If you can see that, 15 centimeters and then the height of the bag, 18 centimeters tall. This bag has uh, rear pockets. It's, they're not as big as these two bags, but they do have these pockets here, and I think you could fit, you could fit a couple of cliff bars maybe, you could fit an inner tube, a tool set, and, and maybe some gels or something in these pockets. It has the side pockets, which are a little bit bigger, and it does have the front, which is a little bit bigger, and you could probably fit uh, a few other things in here, I don't know. It is all leather trim, and it has a leather buckle style strap back here for the rack to mount onto. Oh yeah, it does have the map 
screen, the map pocket on top. Uh, but again, it's a little small, so it's going to be harder to fit a full map in here. You're going to have to end up folding it. And it is Velcro to get into the map screen. There is uh, some loop, our eyelets or loop here for these leather straps to be used as ways to attach this to directly to your, your handlebar. Uh, but we'll go into why I don't recommend doing that um, in a little bit. It's a nice well-made bag. It's not the heaviest. It's not the lightest. Uh, it's made out of kind of classic looking materials. The color palette's very simple. Uh, the leather is what looks, it's similar to the Brooks honey colored leather. So if you're trying to match it to a Brooks saddle, I think it would match pretty well. It's kind of a light, this is a lightish blue. It's kind of a bluish color. I think it come in two different colors. Uh, but that's it. That's basically it. If you have any questions on this bag, um, and if you're if you're considering a Gilles Bertude, and you like the narrower profile this way, they tend to make they just get taller as you get larger. They don't they're not really big this in this direction. They kind of get taller. So anyway, that's the Gilles Bertude. Now, uh, let's look at this Swift bag. I think the Swift bag. This is my bag here. Um, I use this one a lot and I have a lot of good things to say about it. It's a wax canvas. It has a lot bigger pockets back here in the back um, and inside it has these inner flap here that can be hooked together to secure your things better and then if you want to flip this over and you can loop it back on the back of the stem that's how I usually do it or if you have a deck allure you can fit the shock cord down and inside here through the deck allure and there's a loop down there to hook it onto. It has these side sleeves. They're not actual pockets, they're sleeves. Things that fit in here really well are gloves and your cell phone and your wallet. The problem is you gotta be really careful. Things have popped out of here while I'm riding. So if it's your wallet, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you put it in there. Uh, in here, you can, it's a big front pocket and I have things like spare brake cables, shifter cables, um, two inner tubes, batteries for my for flashlights. Carry quite a bit of stuff up in the front. Um, and it does have, for the rack mount, it has these extra Velcro straps that loop under and through the rack, which helps secure the bag so it doesn't move around as much. The Gilbertude obviously doesn't have these, so something to think about if you're looking for a bag that you may not be able to use a deck allure for. You could get this style, this bag, and have these extra Velcro straps. I really like them. Some people don't like them. It also has a specific width, so you have to make sure that these are designed for a randoneering rack, the width of these. So if you get a custom rack, you'll have to find out if they can make it fit with these pre-sewn in straps. Uh, what else? Okay, let's get to dimensions. The width is uh, 27 wide. It's um, 22 deep um, in this direction, and then the height of it is uh, 20, about 23 and a half, 24 tall. So I'll post a link in the description to all these different bags so that you can look them up. Uh, but uh, this is the wax canvas and this is the heaviest of the bags, I would say, that I own. All right, so let's come over here and look at this acorn bag. This bag and this bag are very similar, made out of a very similar material. This is a waxed canvas um, or it's like a, I don't know if it's called a wax canvas or not. It feels like it is, but I think it's a cotton it's like a cotton duck or something. It has a waterproofing. The way it's sewn is to be waterproof. So anyway, I'll go through this. Uh, this bag is, uh, has, again, has shot cord, has a big front pocket. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the dimensions. So this bag width is 27. The depth here is 17. And then the height, the height of it is approximately 20. So it's a little bit shorter this way 
and it's a little bit shorter this way. It also has the uh, Velcro straps underneath to fasten it again to a randoneering style rack so it can be fastened here. Um, and they're about the same width uh, as those are as far as you have to fit it to more or less these, these kind of style randoneering racks. This bag has these same kind of pockets, but this one, these pockets are held on with these interesting twist style uh, latches. That's the difference between this one and this one. This one uses a shock cord, but actually the one of the shot, I lost the shock cord on this side. So this shock cord just holds the pockets closed through these loops. So I don't know which one's necessarily gonna be better. I think these pockets are hard to close no matter what. The Jill Bertude uses the same thing. It uses shock cord with loops. And it seems like th no matter what solution you choose, they're, they're, they're still somewhat difficult to open and close no matter what. Uh, let's see, this also has the flap that you can loop over the back of the stem, but it's a, depending on the height of your stem and your handlebar, you, you know, the height of the bag will determine how easily this stays closed. If the bag is really tall, then it's going to be looping down. If the, if the bag is really short, then it's kind of coming up. So, you, you know, you might want to measure your bike first, get your bike fit properly to you and then choose the bag to best fit the bike. So I, I would recommend if you're actually really serious about a bag like this with the Decalure, or Decalure that you should uh, set the bike up first, then measure your bike, and then pick a bag that fits that bike really well. That will give you the best uh, fit overall and best performance. I did mention this bag here. This is a rackless bag. I won't go through it, but uh, I, just for dimension sake, the uh, width of this bag is uh, about 17 and a half millimeters by, uh, let's see, let's get the width. The width is 10 and the height is uh, 19. And when I first showed you this Geo Bertude, I mentioned that you could use these straps to mount the bag to the handlebars. Well, the reason I don't recommend doing that is because one problem you will find if you mount a bag this wide to your handlebars is that you will not have room for your hands on top of the bars when you're riding. I would rather add the extra weight of a decalure in order to move the bag further away from the handlebars to be, to be able to maintain all of the hand positions that you can, that you can possibly get especially for a long distance ride where you're gonna wanna move around. So that's why the Ruthworks bag is actually narrow enough to be able to still fit your hands on the handlebars with the bag. But that's only because it is a very, very small bag. Uh, and so that's why it actually works. So I won't go into any more details on this. You can, I'll post the link to that video. Um, and then on these bags, Probably the last thing to summarize on these is that they have, I'll show you, the Gilbertude is unique in that it has this buckle style uh, uh, strap here for the rack, which is adjustable. On the other hand, these two bags are not adjustable. They basically only have kind of a set strap that's already, the spacing of the strap is already defined but it should fit most Nitto style randoneering racks. Okay, so now that I've shown you a little bit about the different bags, let's uh, just touch on Decalures for a moment. So a Decalure, if you're not familiar with that term, is basically this bracket right here. Uh, this metal bracket, this is a Velo Orange uh, Decalure, made by Velo Orange, and basically what it does is it's a it's an additional bracket that's mounted to your bag that helps provide that's mounted from your bag to your bike in some way 
This particular one mounts to the headset, but there are others out there on the market such as the Compass brand, and there's Nitto that makes a Decalure. There's probably other brand names. Uh, Gilbertude makes a Decalure, and they all have different ways of uh, mounting the Decalure or supporting the rack off of either the stem or the headset or the back of the stem. There's various ways to do this. Each one kind of has pros and cons, and it seems no matter which one you choose, there's going to be a trade-off. So I have this one here from Velo Orange, or Velo Orange, and it's a nice Decalure. It's an affordable Decalure, and it uses the headset. This is a one-inch threaded headset. Uh, it uses the stack. It uses the space inside the headset here to uh, support the Decalure. To be able to use this Decalure, you would need to have enough threads left over on your steering tube to be able to add this extra spacer in here. Uh, fortunately for me, I do, and I was able to use it. What you'll notice is that uh, I have another spacer down here, and that is the brake hanger. These are cantilever brakes, so it requires an extra hanger for the cable, for the brake cable. So that uses up about a millimeter and a half, as well as the Decalure uses a millimeter and a half. But also, because of the shape of the tube of this Decalure, you need to have enough space between the two, which required another spacer. So when you add all that up, that's about a centimeter of extra space in here to be able to use this type of Decalure. So if you don't have that much extra space, uh, chances are you won't be able to use this one. Uh, the good news is there's other ways to do this. Gilbertude and Compass utilize the stem bolt uh, to mount the Decalure. They have a limited range of vertical adjustment, so you'll have to make sure you either get a bag that is tall enough to use that Decalure, or you will need to lower your stem enough to be able to use it. Now the latter case of lowering your stem is not the best way to do this because generally you want your stem and handlebar to be at the right height for your riding style. And that's very important. So I'd, I wouldn't sacrifice your riding position for the deck allure. I would work off of your handlebar height and go from there. Uh, if you can't make any of those things work, then you're, ch then you're possibly looking at having to do a custom bag or a custom deck allure or getting away from a deck allure entirely. Uh, custom bags and racks can be designed and made so that you don't need a Decalure. And that's a really handy feature for some people, especially if you want the option later to move your stem up and down. So there are definitely going to be lots of considerations if you're interested in doing the Decalure or the handlebar bag. You need to pick your rack first and foremost, and then you need to pick your Decalure uh, if you need to have one. Therese, on the other hand, doesn't use a Decalure. She uses these little loops here. Let's see if we can come in here and look at these. So these little loops right here, Therese hooks uh, some cinching style cord through this loop and around the handlebar. And that's one additional way, kind of like the Ruthworks bag where I had these elastic shock cord. That's another way to secure the bag to the handlebars to keep it from moving around sideways when you're riding. The nice thing about a Decalure is that it is a permanent fixture and when done well, it definitely holds the bag very securely. I really like the Decalure, but I also know there are some trade-offs. For one, it adds a little extra weight to your bag uh, and that's something to consider if you're really weight conscious. If you're not and you just want something really secure, then adding a little extra weight for a Decalure is a valuable um, upgrade or it's a, it's a valuable use of weight. When it comes to these bags, these are all standard bags, so they come with a bottom attachment as I showed before, and the width of that is based on off-the-shelf racks. If you're going to do a custom rack, then you can have the bag made to that rack and the spacings will be different. But uh, this is the Nitto a randoneering rack and Velo Orange makes one. They're all about the same size. So generally these standard bag sizes will work uh, with those racks pretty well, pretty well. Of course, there's always considerations to be had, but in general, they work 
pretty well. I'm, I'm very pleased with this bag and Decalure. Perhaps the only thing I would change to the Decalure is that I would have the manufacturer put in a key. I'd have them key it so that it's secured to the, to the steering tube through the groove that's cut in the back of the steering tube. So that way it doesn't rotate uh, sideways back and forth when the bag is, uh, you know, moving. When the bag is moving back and forth, it can cause the deck allure to twist uh, back and forth, which has in the past loosened up this top nut. I have since really tightened it really tight and uh, that has that seemed to have been the remedy, but I do feel like I was putting quite a bit of torque on there. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's necessarily the best way to handle that issue. Anyway, um, it's working out, so I'm pretty happy with it. And like I said, there's other ones out there. You can check with the Gilbertude, uh, Compass, and Nitto all have variations. There's probably other ones. There's I think Soma might even make uh, a Decalure or a rack with a Decalure built in. All right, well, that uh, concludes today's video on randoneering handlebar bags. If there's any questions, if there's something I missed, Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and have a nice day.